Coming up, we'll take an in-depth look at the mayor's race and how it can impact our local community. We'll also learn about how this election will impact the students here at FHS and check in with an important project at a middle school. I'm Naomi Shaver. And I'm Ross May. Welcome to Breaking the Leash. <laughs> Welcome back to this month's edition of Breaking the Leash. Thank you for joining us. Election season is about to hit full swing across the nation, but there are many ways throughout this episode where you can see how our students and community members are getting involved in the election process. Here at FHS, we have two teachers who are involved by either holding office or running for a seat. FHS TV reporter Presley Payne sits down with these two candidates to see the value in holding local office seats. As election day approaches, we often look towards big names, but local offices hold the keys to many decisions that directly impact our lives. I think local offices are where we have the ability to make the most change in our communities. Um, we talk a lot about you know, the big policies that we see that scare us and excite us at the federal and state level a lot, but um, really our local city council members and our, and our mayor, are um, they're the kind of people who decide what's done with our local tax dollars, they decide how we decide to deal with local businesses and um, the, the parks and places that you interact with in the public on a daily basis in Fayetteville. I'm actually running for city council because of the things I've seen as a teacher. Um, so I've seen a lot of students who struggle with um, food insecurity. I've seen a lot of students who um, have unstable um, home lives and I wanted to do something outside of school to help with that. Um, so I've been volunteering in the community for a long time um, and you know, trying to help people on a case-by-case -case basis through stuff like that. But uh, it really, the more I've done it, I've realized that this is kind of a pattern happening across multiple different um, communities in the city. And so I really wanted to try to step up and address that for all of us. I think that local offices are very important because they're the ones that have the most impact on you as an individual. Federal offices, um, the topics are so broad, it's hard to see the impacts, but as you get into your local offices, they really do have a lot of impact on you as the individual. Um, I ran for Justice of the Peace because I wanted to get involved on a local level. Um, I was originally gonna run for city council, and then I found out that there was an opening on Washington County Quorum Court. I think the biggest struggle with holding local offices, well, time, honestly, it's a very time-consuming position on top of being a teacher and a mom. Um, but also, um, you know, there's so many people that have so many different feelings about different issues that we're facing in um, the county. And so um, a lot of people have very strong feelings about these and you have to listen to everybody um, and give every voice a consideration when you're doing a job like this. It's great to see that here at FHS, two of our teachers are shaping the community outside of the classroom. For FHS TV, I'm Presley Payne. Thanks, Presley. Make sure to educate yourself with the ballot so you are aware of all the different issues and seats you may vote for. Another one of the close races this year is for the office of mayor of Fayetteville. This race is packed with four candidates and could come down to just a few votes difference on election day. We reached out to all four individuals running for mayor, but we're only able to sit with Molly Ron and Tom Terminella. Our reporter Eleanor Eichmann spoke with those two candidates to find out their vision for the future of Fayetteville. As this year's mayoral race proves to be very close, we sat down with two mayoral candidates who spoke about their future plans for Fayetteville. One of the things that is most important, and it's apt to talk about now since we're here at FHS, is a better working relationship between the city and the high school, and also the city and the university. Um, the university has 33,000 students and is a wonderful asset to our city, but also there's some friction there with the amount of students that are, that are here. So I think having a really strong partnership between the U of A and also the school district is really key and it's an important part of my platform. Um, the other thing I spent the most, spend the most amount of time talking about is housing. It's unacceptable to me that we have so many people in our community that are um, experiencing homelessness or really just one step away from experiencing homelessness. The things that 
are impacting the city right now that need to be addressed are water storage and distribution, water treatment, the treatment facilities, the water and sewer plants, mm -hmm. right? The capacity issues with them, mm -hmm. right? We're under a fourth or fifth year of a moratorium where people can't turn on their sprinklers and wash their cars in all the western part of this city. Fayetteville has had three mayors since 1992 when the city went to um, a citywide election for mayor. Prior to that, mayors were elected uh, by members of the city council, and so it wasn't a citywide election where all residents, uh, registered voters got to elect the mayor. And so since that change, there have been three male mayors, and if I'm elected, I will be the first woman to be elected in a citywide election for mayor in Fayetteville, and I think that's really exciting. It's just, here again, they'll have a choice, right? Mm -hmm. My point of view, or the same old, right? Mm -hmm. In the same old, we've done okay, limped along, but we do so much better, mm -hmm. right? You need somebody that's gonna be everybody's mayor. Don't matter if they're poor or rich or left, right, blue, red, whatever, right? You're there to serve the people. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing it for that, you're in the wrong business. So I think what sets me apart in this year's election is the stage of life that I'm in. Um, I have three children. One is at the university, one is here at the high school, and one is at uh, Woodland Junior High. And so I can really relate to what young families in our city are experiencing it, but are experiencing because I'm also living it. Yeah. So I have executive experience in my current role and work closely with all the departments at the city, but I'm a first time candidate. Um, for office, which I think is exciting, and hopefully people can see themselves reflected in that. But um, overall, Fayetteville is a beautiful community. It's a great place to live. Met my wife here, four beautiful kids, you know, children. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, 25 nieces and nephews, right? And, uh, but it could be so much better, right? And uh, it will over time. It never stays one way or the other. The pendulum swings back and forth. Thanks, Eleanor. And again, be sure to check out all four candidates and their positions before Election Day. Looking away from elections for one story, there are many programs around our district which allow students to better understand the world around them. Today, we go behind the scenes with one such program at McNair Middle School, where students are learning about water conservation and the struggles of countries around the world. Reporter Tate Barnes gives us a look at this special program and how the students at McNair responded to this lesson. Over the past week, students from McNair Middle School got hands-on experience learning about the struggles of accessing clean water in underdeveloped countries. We spoke with students and teachers involved to learn about the struggles and what they learned from this activity. We learned about um, the lack of access to clean drinking water that a lot of people have as a major problem, specifically in Africa and Asia. Then we went outside and each student had two gallon jugs um, to carry with them on their water walk. So the, the idea was that they would simulate um, a water walk that um, specifically women and girls would normally be doing as a part of their daily routine um, in Sub-Saharan Africa. It seemed easy at first until I started getting into it and as I was going along the way, I noticed that there was a lot of issues that they face with weather, temperature, and scrapes and bruises they must get doing this. We walked um, about a mile to a nearby creek. They had to fill up their gallon jugs with water and then they had to walk back um, to the track. Um, but we had a number of students talk about how hard it was, how much it made their shoulders hurt. Um, one kid said he was sweating out his eyeballs. When I was walking back up the hill, it was like when I was holding the jugs, it would hurt my shoulders a lot and um, I didn't even have half of the water that the people used. I don't think they have to think in those ways very often. They don't get pushed outside of their comfort zone very often. Um, for some students, it was just walking, walking a mile. We were really hoping to help students develop empathy and understand that people around the world don't always have access to clean water. And it changed my perspective because it made me really think about how lucky we are and how it takes those people five miles to get water and it takes us five seconds. I'm Tate Barnes with FHS TV, back to the desk. Thanks, Tate. Our final story jumps back into elections and shows how students here at FHS can make a difference. Many AP government students will be poll workers come election day, and they are getting training right here at FHS. 
FHS TV's Rylan Qualls gives us a glimpse of how students are getting involved and how this will serve them in the future. As many of you know, the 2024 presidential election is coming up on the 5th of November. Teachers are using this to educate their students on politics. I know that they come back from election day um, talking about how interesting it was to see the different people in the community who turn out to vote. And we'll talk about like the demographic characteristics of voters, like what did you notice in about different parts of town and different things that, they, that they'll experience. I also think that they get a real appreciation of our election workers and poll workers who work um, for the county and administering elections and they see the effort that goes on behind the scenes and the dedication of the poll workers and I think that building that kind of understanding of how the systems work but then also the people behind them helps to them to feel more connected and engaged and appreciate the privilege of voting. I think our volunteering at the uh, polls is a really good way for just us to understand the election process and to get out in our community and encourage political participation. I think it's very important as a young generation who wants like stuff to change, I don't think we should just sit back and watch other people vote because our vote is important like anyone else's vote. Well, student engagement at this level really helps to prepare them as they enter into adulthood because we really want our kids to grow up to be active, engaged citizens. And participating in elections is one of the uh, most common ways that people participate in um, our political system. And I want them to see the process, to feel comfortable with it, to understand um, the requirements that they have in terms of you know, registration and the knowledge that they need. Um, to be able to be active and engaged voters as they go into adulthood. That's all we have for this edition of Breaking the Leash. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at FHSTV Fayetteville High for all new shows and live events. And make sure to check out our Instagram at FHS Bulldog TV to stay up to date with the news around the school and in the community. I'm Ross May. And I'm Naomi Shaver. We'll see you next time.